White brothers, Wilbur and Orville, woke up early one Saturday morning. They were excited. Their father, Milton Wright, was returning from one of his various trips and he always brought them a gift. What would it be this time? They wondered. Milton Wright was a bishop and he often travelled to other states to give sermons. Dad, we missed you! They said in unison as they rushed into his arms. What have you got for us this time? They were left speechless as he tossed the gift into the air. Toy glider! They screamed in glee. The toy glider was made of paper, bamboo and cork. It had a rubber band to twirl its rotor. It was about a foot long. As they watched the toy glider fly around the tiny room, they each had a dream, that of building an actual airplane and flying it. Later on, they pointed to this experience with the toy as the initial inspiration for their interest in flying. Experiment was the key word in the Wright household. Their maternal grandfather had a sprawling farm in Richmond and the children had all the space in the world to investigate, explore and experiment. They had inherited their love of machines from Grandfather Corner and their mother, Catherine Corner. Catherine was good with tools and often made wooden toys for her children. One Christmas, Wilbur gifted Orville a set of engraving tools. After that, there was no stopping Orville. He spent all his free time carving on wood or metal. Wilbur and Orville did not study beyond high school. They joined their father's printing press. And Orville seized this opportunity to use the woodcuts he carved on his father's letterpress. Milton Wright left the running of the press to his sons. While Wilbur took care of the editing, Orville assumed the role of the publisher of the weekly newspaper, the West Side News. Whenever the machine broke down, they fixed it themselves. They learned a lot about machines while they worked at the press. After 10 years of running the press, Wilbur and Orville capitalized on the national bicycle craze and opened a repair and sales shop across the street. The year was 1892. They put their friend Ed Sines in charge of the printing press. In 1896, they started manufacturing their own brand. Wilbur and Orville were more than just brothers. They were good friends and partners. Wilbur once said of his brother, Although Orville is four years younger to me, the difference in our age is not so apparent. We live together, play together and even think together. In the early 1890s, they read several articles on the dramatic glides of Otto Lilienthal in magazines and newspapers. They followed each and every bit of aeronautical news with keen interest. In the year 1896, there were three important aeronautical events. In May, Samuel Langley, secretary of the Smithsonian Institute, successfully flew an unmanned steam-powered model aircraft. Around the same time, Octave Chanute, an engineer and aviation expert, organized a team to test various types of gliders over the sand dunes along the shores of Lake Michigan. In August, Otto Lilienthal died 
when his glider came crashing down. This made them even more determined. They had to make that airplane. They had to help man fly. They wrote to the Smithsonian Institute in Washington, D.C., requesting information and publications about aeronautics. They did a lot of reading. They sat and observed birds for hours on end. Birds flew up, birds flew down, and birds also flew sideways. That's it! They exclaimed one day as they sat observing a flight of pigeons. Pressure is what lifts a bird up in the air. One day, Wilbur was absent-mindedly twisting the long inner tube box at their bicycle shop while talking to a customer. Suddenly, he exclaimed, I got it! I just have to twist the wings of our airplane in the opposite directions. The customer thought he'd gone mad. Soon after that, Wilbur announced to Orwell, I think it is time to build our own glider. We worked so much with wood and metal that I'm sure it will be a success. All we need is to keep our patience. In the autumn of 1900, the two brothers journeyed to Kitty Hawk in North Carolina to begin their gliding experiments. Octave Chanute had suggested the location as it had long stretches of sand dunes and regular breeze. While Otto Lilienthal used to glide by hanging vertically from the bars of the glider, Wilbur lay flat as Orville gave it a push. It flew but came crashing down after a while. For the next three years, they tried experimenting on the wingspans and the design and the weight. But each effort was met with little or no success. The brothers were disappointed. They racked their brains trying to find a way to keep the machine up in the air for longer. I think the air pressure under the wings has to be made stronger. An engine can do this. It'll draw more air under the wings. Wilbur suggested. They put all their energy in designing and making an engine. Together with Charlie Taylor, an employee who worked in their bicycle shop, they fabricated their first gasoline engine in 1903. When that engine was fixed to the glider, they discovered that it was too heavy. Several changes were made to the engine and to the glider. The Wright brothers' determination bore fruit one day. On 17th December 1903, the brothers had initially made a pact. Both of them wouldn't fly at the same time. In case one met with a dangerous accident, the other could carry on the work of designing an airplane. That fateful day, they tossed a coin and Wilbur won. The first airplane lifted off the ground. It flew for about three miles at Kitty Hawk. The time taken was 59 seconds. A cheer went up from the five people gathered below as the first airplane took flight. The Wright brothers or the Birdmen had done it. Orville took his father, 81 years old Milton Wright, flying for the first time. Tears wouldn't stop streaming down his eyes, so proud he was of his son's achievements. The year 1903 went down in aviation history as the year of glory. The celebrations that followed in Ohio continued for a very long time. The brothers were honored by the Aero Club of America. They even received gold medals from the President of the United States. <laughs>